Yeah, thanks guys for being here. Um, obviously, super excited. Um, this is a uh, just a fun time of the year, and you work so hard. And just really proud of the players and the staff for all the hard work that they put in. Um, and we're excited about the opportunity, you know, against a program that um, lots of coaches on our staff have familiarity with, um, and a staff that we have a tremendous amount of respect in, you know, with Coach Helton, Coach Summers, and other members of their staff that has experience in this league and in other um, great conferences, and they have players that have played in this league as well. So, tremendous opportunity, tremendous challenge, and super excited and super proud of the work that the staff and the players have put in up to this point, and we know that it's just beginning. So. That, I'll questions. Let's go start right with Matt. Uh, Nick, I think you were on the 2012 WKU staff that went and played Alabama. What do you remember about that week and then that game? Oh, that's a good question. 2012. Um, I thought there was really, really great players and coaches here at Alabama that we were competing against. Um, and it was an incredible environment. You know, I can remember um, yeah, just the songs, the, the pageantry, the history, tradition. You certainly feel that when you come to a place like Alabama. I can remember specifically hearing Coach Bryant's voice about calling your mom. You know, I remember that being played over the big screen. So um, it wasn't the most enjoyable day uh, for the Hilltoppers, but uh, um, our kids battled hard. We had, we had a lot of really, really good players there at Western Kentucky during that time, and, and obviously Alabama did as well. So. Been on the right side, front row with Nick. Yeah, what's uh, what would you like to see from Jalen in this first game? Well, I think all of our players were looking for execution. Um, we're looking for um, communication, fundamentals, um, good decision making. You know, playing together um, and playing with great effort and toughness. And so, uh, I think that goes for every position, and certainly the quarterbacks are part of that. All right, go to the left side, Tony. Where, where do you think stand right now with the right tackle battle, and just how confident are you feeling about both those guys uh, heading into the game? I feel very confident in both of them, and um, you know, as far as what that'll look like to start the game and to start the game, we'll, we'll wait till Saturday before you know we let the opponent know exactly what that'll look like. Um, but they both have had very good camps, have had very good moments, and um, yeah, we're excited about them. Back row on the right side, Ryan. Coach, as the fans learn more about you, Coach DeBoer and, and Coach Womack, what, what's a tradition that you do before a game? Any superstitions or anything like that? Or do you, do you eat a certain thing, something that the fans will learn about you? No, nothing um, nothing super specific other than, you know, hugging and kissing my kids and my wife. And that's really it. You know, that's, a, that's enough for me. So, um, yeah, nothing, no, not, not, nothing that way. I played baseball growing up, but. You know, I wouldn't say I'm superstitious, maybe a little stitious, but that's not it. Let's go to the left side, Steven. Coach, I'm not using the consistency grow with guys like Bubba Hampton and uh, just some of the younger receivers we coached out as well in that room. To ask the question again, I heard the names. The, the consistency of the young receivers, Bubba Hampton, Rico Scott, how they've grown in that receiver room. Well, I think they've grown each and every day that they've been here. Um, and that's for every young player. And that's for every you know player on our program. We expect them to continue to improve. I think there's a lot of really quality young players in that room, and I know Coach Shep and TG and, and the rest of the guys are pouring into them. Um, and I think that's the challenge. You know, when you're a young player, you know, it's it's usually not a skill issue. You know, you, you, those guys can run and can jump and can catch and cut and all the things that that's why they're here. Um, but we're trying to help them just become complete players each and every day. And you know, the guys that you mentioned, there's others in that room as well that are coming along. And um, their mindset's been great. Their willingness to work and be coached has been great. And so we expect big things out of, you know, not just those guys, but other young players in that room. Stick on the right side with Emily Grace here. Coach, continuing on the wide receiver discussion, what checkpoints do you want to see them reach in game one? I don't think there's anything um, specific to them that's different from the rest of the, the guys, you know, um, you know, kind of to the question about Jalen, you know, what we're looking for in the first game. Um, you know, we want to play winning football. I think that comes down to doing the simple things really well. And so for all those guys, you know, specifically for wide receivers, you're looking for them to line up quickly, you know, execute their assignment as fast as possible, make the simple plays. And, you know, when opportunities for big plays or, or um, you know, their talent to take over, you want to see that come out. But 
ultimately, I think for all the positions, you know, you want to see just simple execution, um, good communication, good fundamentals, you know, alignment, assignment, technique, those types of things. That's what we're looking for. Right side here, Charlie. And speaking of communication, just how do you see the offensive line come together as a group over the course of 20 plus practices? I think there's been tremendous growth in that group. I think the leadership there, you know, led by Tyler Booker has been outstanding. I think the accountability in the group is high. Um, I think there's a lot of pride uh, in that room. And uh, and so they've continued to improve and get better. I think the camaraderie and brotherhood in that room has grown. Um, I think you see guys that genuinely care about one another. I think you see guys that are willing to confront and demand each other because they know that they, they trust those people. You know, they, um, they know that, that each one of them has each other's best interest in mind. And so, um, yeah, there's been a lot of growth. I think Coach Capps done a great job as well as the other young coaches in that room. Um, they've done a really nice job. Jump on the far left side there. Hey, Coach, from a health standpoint, can you just give us an update on the status of uh, running back Jack Miller, um, Jaden Roberts, and uh, other dudes that were just nicked or banged up throughout ball camp? Can you just give us a status update? Yeah, I, I appreciate the question, but no, uh, I'll let Coach handle all of those <laughs> questions. But, um, yeah, I'll let Coach DeVore talk about any of the stats of the players, but I appreciate the much better question. So, uh, stand on the left side, KB in the front row. You've been with Kalen and a couple of different stops. And a lot of things people say throughout ball camp is kind of how steady he is. Did he get to up or down? But is there kind of a shift you see in him once game week comes around, maybe when the season comes around and, and getting game and ready, something like that? Honestly, no. You know, and I mean that, in, uh, you know, uh, it's a tremendous compliment to him. You know, his attention to detail, his intensity, mm -hmm. his focus, um, his steady all the time. You know, and um, it's a tremendous quality and a leader. Um, in a person, and so no, I, I don't, you know, we don't get to game week and then all of a sudden you see a different person, you know, not at all. His attention to detail is year round, um, each and every day, in all areas of our program. Um, and so, you know, maybe your focus shifts to different, you know, parts of, um, you know, what you're responsible for relative to schematics or, you know, putting together a game plan, but the attention to detail is steady all the time um, in all areas of our program. We have time for another one or two questions. If there are any out there. All right, that's good. Oh, do we have one? Jamie, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, Jamie. Hey, Coach. Uh, Saban on game day talked about how he visited the second scrimmage. He said the culture is still the same right now as it was when he was coached. Can you describe the culture here at Alabama? Well, I think it's one that's you know constantly evolving with each new group of players. You know, I certainly think. Um, um, well, I appreciate Coach saying that. You know, that's important to us. And we have a tremendous amount of respect for, you know, what he did here and the standard and the expectations that he's created along with the other former players and former coaches. You know, I think it's evolving with each group. Um, and so I think each step along the way, um, you learn more and more about your team and, and your unit and your position group. And I think we'll learn more about um, this, this group of players after the first game. You know, you practice so long. And I think sometimes you learn more about your team after one game than you do after 30 practices, you know. And so um, what I would tell you is that it's an unselfish group. It's a group that cares about one another, has tremendous pride in this university and this football program. And they want to do right by each other and the fans and their families. And um, they've been working extremely hard um, for this opportunity. And so we're really proud of the players. They're, it's a great group of kids, and they come from great families, and we're really lucky to coach them. Thank you. Okay, we'll